I have made a car that can drive in almost any orientation. <laughs> it looks ridiculous, but it does kind of work. Find out how in this video. Hey, this is YBR with BeamNG Drive, and today we're going to do something stupid because when I made the video for the update, I noticed if we tried to drive the D35 Super Pig, it was really easy to get the vehicle to do a front flip. So let me give you a quick demonstration of how easy it is. Just like that, we've done a front flip and we're not done yet. We're going to do another one before we get to the bottom of this mountain. Here we are. Two front flips in a row. Ooh, almost three. That's two and a half. And this thing can still keep on driving. It's really quite amazing just how easily it's able to do something like that. And it's also pretty impressive how little damage it gets flying through the air. There is damage, but it's nothing that serious. And then I got to thinking, what if we could do this on a paved road? So I decided, let's go ahead and try it out. So if we get up to speed and then we slam on the brakes, you see the back end really wants to lift up, but it can't quite do it because there are too many suspension components back there like the straps that are limiting it. So we're gonna remove a bunch of the pieces in the rear. The limit straps are the most obvious thing to remove, but we're also gonna remove the bypass shocks and the sway bars. So on the back, all we basically have is the spring. So now we have much less holding the rear suspension down. So if we slam on our brakes, look at that. We can flip over the vehicle on a perfectly flat paved road. And we can actually take this a level further. If we lock the differentials and use manual mode, we can do it where we slam on the brakes, let it tip, slam it into reverse, floor it, and get it back onto its wheels and do a full, complete front flip pretty consistently as I will now try to demonstrate by doing it again. The important thing is you don't go into reverse until after the wheels are off the ground. If you go into reverse with the wheels on the ground, it won't work. And also, weirdly enough, if you try to do this at speeds higher than like 50 miles per hour, it also doesn't work. And it's not, it flips too much. It's the vehicle won't flip enough, which is not what you would expect because you would think bigger speed would mean bigger flip. So there's this small speed zone that's the perfect speed to do a front flip and too slow or too fast and it just won't work. And thankfully with the D35 Super Pig, we can easily get back on our wheels and continue flipping. Although it appears with the damage to the roof, it's not gonna flip as consistently. The dents just make it fall to the side a bit and it doesn't bounce forward back onto its wheels like it was before. So there's just a quick look at the damage, really not that much. Now let me show you what happens when you go too fast or too slow. So this first run, we're gonna dock brown it. That means we're gonna go 88 miles per hour and then slam on the brakes. And the reason this doesn't work, I think, is because at these higher speeds, the vehicle is more level. At the lower speeds, the rear end is squatting down and that squat gives you more momentum flipping the rear of the vehicle when you brake. So as you see, nothing happened from 88 miles per hour. But if we disable the front transfer case and then slam on the brakes at about 30 miles per hour, we can do this. First you do a stoppy and then you can control it. You can actually steer this a little bit. And if you got your throttle right, you can drive like this for a long, long time. In fact, you could probably do it forever if you maintain speeds properly. But doing this is not the easiest thing to do because you always need to feather the throttle or you'll fall onto your wheels. The other thing I tried is doing a full on stoppy and then we stand on our nose. And that's about as close as I can get to doing it. It's so close, but it just barely doesn't stay. We can make it stay if we want to though. All we need to do is remove the front bumper because the front bumper on it is really tilted at a weird angle. So now if we try to do a stoppy just like before, and we manage the throttle appropriately, we can stand right on our front and we don't have to do anything at all. In fact, this is surprisingly stable because we can kind of move around a little bit and nothing bad is really gonna happen. For example, if I try to accelerate and move the wheels around, we can spin the car ever so slightly and if we lock the front differential again, we can spin it around even more so slightly. Truthfully, we can't do that much since the front wheels barely touch the ground. But once we're done messing around and going in reverse, it's actually really easy to go back into forward and then pop it onto its wheels and keep on driving. It really is impressive 
how hard it is to flip this vehicle over because you get onto its roof it's like oh no it's stuck haha ha, just kidding a lot of the pieces on the truck are angled so it'll end up on its side and when it ends up on its side we just are 10 seconds away from being back on our wheels but you can sometimes have it where you get stuck on your roof and that i do not like so what can we do to make it where the car doesn't flip onto its roof ever well i have a bit of an idea but first here's a quick look at the damage for this ruined truck Okay, so here is my dumb idea to make it where no matter what I do, the car cannot flip over. First, we're going to spawn up the ball. Then we're going to take the ball, and we're going to attach it to the truck. And this might cause the camera to start glitching out, and I have no idea why I'm saying the something. We're done with that. Now we're focusing on what happens when we flip over the truck. We bounce off of the ball, and we end up upside down, but it rolls us onto our side perfectly. That was a worst-case scenario, and the ball did its job, and once I'm on my side, we can always get back up onto my wheels and continue along. Obviously, though, we got to do more than just one test. So I'm going to go pretty fast this time. Actually, I'm going a little too fast. we got to slow it down and then accelerate it again to do the flip properly. So 45 miles per hour, and here we go. Whoa! That was cool. I actually used the ball for a front flip, which I don't think is that easy to do, is it? No, not exactly. See, on that one, we did end up back on our wheels pretty naturally, but it wasn't a front flip. It was a weird side 180 flip thing. But either way, the point still stands. We are once again on our wheels, and I don't know if that's just the way the suspension is because it's so messed up for me. But that was hilarious. It looked like I was going to tip to the left and then to the right. Somehow I managed to stay up, but it really didn't even matter because we got the power of the ball. Keeping me the upright. I said I was done doing the stuff. So here's one at higher speed again. Can we do a full flip? Come on, no. I might not be able to do the flip, but I'm still very impressed. Alright, what if we do it at a slow speed? So we just barely hit the ball and it just writes itself up perfectly. There needs to be a mod that has giant ball in the part selector and I can just click it from there and then I can easily have a car that'll never flip over. And you know what? If it's a car that can't get back onto its wheels on its own when it's on its side like this guy, well then you just stick balls on the side of the car too and then it'll flip itself upright from there as well. And that's actually something we could try in another video. If you'd be interested in seeing that, leave a comment. But now we're doing the serious test. What happens if we roll over the truck with the ball attached and oh this oh dang the ball just saved it from a huge impact but it couldn't save it from all of the impacts we have a completely ruined suspension and i don't know if it's gonna be able to get onto its wheels because i think the damage to the suspension just makes it where it can't quite put down the power so instead we're just gonna spin around here until the engine eventually blows up because it's starved of oil but in the end the ball did a really good job. The only thing they could stop the vehicle when it was upside down is after it literally lost the wheel and banged up the other side of the suspension. So that is a great success. But now, what if we took it to the next level? So how do you take this to the next level? Well, instead of having a ball on top of the car, we have another identical car on top of the car. So to set this up, we're gonna have to do a little bit of preparation. First, we're freezing physics. Then we're gonna grab the car we already have and we're gonna reset its rotation all to zero. Then we're gonna do the exact same with the car we just cloned. So that way they have the exact same orientation and they're aligned on the grid. So it's easier to line them up. Next, we're gonna rotate the car that's gonna be on top. So that's nice and easy to do. And then I'm gonna go over here and make sure it's rotated at exactly 180 degrees. And the rest of the rotations, we'll make sure those are zeroed out. And we'll do the same for this car, make sure every rotation is zeroed out. And then all that's left is to move it into position so it's on top of the other truck. And the thing here is you can't just use the coordinates to make it match up because once you rotate the vehicle, it rotates it off axis. So we got to do this with my eyes. So you just kind of look at it and say, we need to move it a little bit more to the right. That looks good. And then we look at the front side of it and say, okay, we need to move it more to the right once more. And a little more. That looks pretty good. Now that the truck is in position, we can go out of the editor. Now, if we just unfreeze physics, it's not going to stay. It'll just slowly tumble off. We'll stay a little bit, actually, but not enough. So what we need to do is reset both of them, put on 100 times slow-mo, and as it falls at 100 times slow-mo, 
we can connect the two vehicles together using the node grabber. So the best way to probably do this is connect it at each of the four corners on the roof so that way we have a nice sturdy connection. And now we should be done with this because both vehicles should be connected together. And also, we're going to want to turn off both of the engines and get rid of the ball because he's just going to get in the way. So now we figure out which car is on the bottom by turning the steering wheel, turn it on, and we are ready to go. First thing we got to do is get lined up with the road, which is not exactly the easiest thing to do because you see just how much it's tipping as I slowly line myself up. In fact, you know what? I bet we would be better off with the original suspension instead of my messed up suspension because it's so ridiculously top heavy now. But look what we can do. We slam on the brakes. The car flips over, lands on the other car's wheels. We turn off that engine, go to the other car, and we can continue driving. That was beautiful. I bet we could do it even smoother now. Watch this. Nice and smooth, all in one motion, and we are driving already. That was so beautiful. Uh, stop looking like you're going to tip over, though. Next time I reset it, I'm going to fix the suspension so it has a normal suspension because I think that will work so much better. I wonder if we can go fast enough to make it do a full flip. So 41 miles per hour is not enough for a full flip. So we probably need to go like 50, maybe even 60 miles per hour. But then we can do a complete rotation so we don't even need to switch trucks. Maybe. We're going to find out once I can finally get myself lined up with the road because it takes so long because I don't want to tip over. Okay, big speed time. The first question is, how fast will it actually go? We do have a little bit of an uphill coming up, which might make it go a little slower. But I'm not sure if it will even reach 60 miles per hour because it does seem to be struggling. And the automatic transmission is not shifting. I don't know why it's doing that, so we'll just go ahead and manual shift this thing. Okay, that's why it wasn't shifting. I just slowed down a lot when I shifted. Fine, back to automatic mode, and I'll let it deal with it. But it looks like about 50 miles per hour is where it's going to top out at. So we're going to go ahead and try to do the full flip. Come on. Oh, it almost made it. We're going to cheat it just a bit. Go in reverse, and ah, a full flip. But will you stop tipping on me? I do not like when you tip so much. But we almost did a complete flip all in one motion. It's definitely possible. Oh, no. All right, next question. Can we get it upright when it's like this? Unfortunately, the answer is no. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fix the suspension, reattach the trucks, and I'll be back when I'm done. All right, the truck now has its original suspension set up. So we're going to do a quick test to see if it helps with the stability by steering to the left and right. And it still looks like it wants to tip over, but I see those limiting straps limiting the travel, and I think it is definitely helping. It just shows you how important those are if you stack a car on top of another car and then want to drive it, which probably isn't their intended use, but they work great for that. So now we're going to go about 50 miles per hour and slam on the brakes and do the full flip, ideally. So there's 50 miles per hour, slam on these brakes, and come on, do it, do it, yeah! It actually worked. We got pieces falling off all over the place, but we did it. That was an amazing success. And we can still do the half flips too, going about 40 miles per hour. Whoop. Interesting. This is a possibility I did not think about. We can drive like this too. It actually drives. It's very badly, but it is driving. Although I think one car's parking brake might be on. Well, the engine's off. Ooh, we could try to make them both drive in the same direction. And then we technically have four wheel drive going to the floor. The only part that's going to be hard is figuring out which direction is which car. So right now I'm the car on the left and that one's going to need to go forward. So then the other car, I need to turn the engine on. And it, come on, why didn't it turn it on? Weird, click again. There we go. And then this one should be going in reverse. Okay, that worked. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about this. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. <laughs> this is so dumb. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's going to go back onto its wheels. Oh, but it lost the wheel and it's on its side. 
Ah, uh, that was amazing. We need to do that intentionally now. And maybe this time, we'll do it on the front wheels and see if we have any sort of steering at all. First, we need to get to a straight area just in case we don't have steering. So this bridge should be the perfect spot. Then we just slam on the brakes and... Perfect! Hold it! There we go. All right, make sure both of the engines are on. And the game is telling me, no, don't do this. You see, it's like, no, 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 no. And I say, yes, yes, yes. So we're accelerating with just the rear. And the front's not moving. Are the brakes on? No. So give it a little bit of gas and see if that helps. Or maybe even go to low range and give it some gas. All right, well, we're not moving very much right now. So you know what we might be able to do? is just crunch in the front bumper a little bit more and that might give us a little bit more versatility here because I'm trying to do some steering and we're just scraping the front a little too much. We can also see if we can steer from the front as well. The, oh, this is a mess because I'm pointed right at the wall so I can like steer and push it up into the air at the same time. Like what in the world am I even doing? I don't quite know. I'm figuring out how it works. And with this knowledge, we can do it better next time. So now we're going to accelerate with the one in the back. And we're going to steer with the one in the front, which... It seems like it could work if we just crunch in the front a bit more. So I'll reset. And then this time, what we're going to do is we're going to go 50 miles per hour and do a high-speed flip. And it'll hopefully crunch in the front just enough for the front wheels to both make contact with the ground. And then also, one nice thing is if we go past this bridge, we have a nice big wide open area to really see can we actually control the car at all or is it completely hopeless so I'll go ahead and wait until we're in the wide open area and once we're in the wide open area we slam on the brakes and we get some crunching in the front and you see it does do something because we got some damage there then we need to put it onto the front wheels nice and carefully all right that looks good we got to make sure both of the engines are turned on and we're actually moving without me having to turn on the engine so we can test the steering here and we do have some steering it's really terrible because the steering is not made from up and down it's supposed to be side to side so you see it just cambers the wheels basically but doing that is enough to control the vehicle some and this is so dumb if I put our dumb clip at the start of the video it would have to be this and I would be like I have made a car that can drive in almost any orientation. It looks ridiculous, but it does kind of work. Find out how in this video. I am honestly shocked at how well the steering is working. It is simultaneously terrible, completely awful, but impressive. Although I have lost control a little bit. The faster we went, the harder it was to control, and eventually we just went a bit too fast and completely lost control. <laughs> Look at the way it landed. Oh man, it is so strong, except I think the suspension's kind of messed up so we can't really put down the power anymore. Yeah, that's unfortunate. All right, I have one final thing I want to test. So I'm going to set it up and I'll be back once it's ready. All right, we have the same setup as before, but now the bottom truck is yellow. More importantly, the truck on top has been rotated around, so now the front is at the back and the back is at the front. This should make the vehicle more stable under braking, so if we want to flip it over, we need to be going higher speeds. But it also will allow us to continue driving in the same direction after we do a flipping maneuver. So to test this out, we're going to hit the brakes at about 50 miles per hour. So we're almost to those speeds, and 50 is there, so slam on the brakes. Do the swap room and whoo, that worked brilliantly. That could not have gone any better, so let's do it again. But this time we're going to bring the speed down to about 40 miles per hour. So there's the speed, hit the brakes, do the switch. And we are still driving nice and solid. I have one last question then. Can we still do the full flip? And I think it's going to be a little bit easier because the car on top right now still has his brakes locked up. So if I slam on my brakes, they'll hit their wheels, but their wheels will be locked. So it should bounce to my car faster. But apparently we're struggling to get up to 50 miles per hour because we have a small uphill. Here we go. We finally got some speed going. And 50 is as fast as we can really expect to go with something like this. So there's 50. Oh, why did you upshift? I don't think it'll matter. So slam on the brakes. Hit the other one. Brakes are already slammed. And yep, full flips are possible. Oh, don't you tip on me. Not today. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. 
If you have any more ideas that you would like to see that are similar to this, do leave a comment. But until next time, this has been YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by what happens when you flip the unflippable truck. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time. Aww. It turns out when you connect them like this, you can't do the thing when you drive on the tips. Oh well.